Hello, everyone. Welcome to Johnny's Nasdaq YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna introduce a truly innovative project, Web VM. Basically, using the Web VM, you can launch a VM in your browser, a fully functional Linux box in your browser. You can check those demo sites here. You can get into root mode, you can launch game and launch applications from this VM inside of your browser. You will not need to create the VM on your server. You don't need to think about the SSH connection, firewall port, all those things. What you need is just a web browser, open a page, type a domain, then you can get your VM running. You can customize your VM on your server. All changes will be saved on your local this VM is fully running in your browser. Your VM will be able to connect to internet by enable networking and that is full functional Linux VM, which you can try all kinds of command and even install some new package inside of it. So now let's jump to it. If you really want to understand how the technology runs behind WebVM, this project, you definitely need to check out this blog post from leanintech.com. This blog post explains very well regarding the technologies and the components. Basically, there are four major components. The Cheer PX is a virtualization engine. Also, there's a virtual storage backend. This is very interesting. It doesn't mean you saved all data on a remote. Actually, they have local persistent cache, your disk cache on local. So all changes will be saved on your local. Even you close your browser next time when you open it, they will read the cache or your changes are still be lit. So that is very interesting component and very creative. You will have networking layer through tail scale. So using the tail scale, that will get your VM to connect to internet. That's a networking layer. Of course, you're gonna have display emulation, HTML5, canvas to show you the front end. Again, if you want to know more details, just go through this blog post. You will find all technologies we just talked about. For this, video i'm gonna show you how to install it now let's do github deployment as this project's readme shows there are two different ways to deploy web vm one is using github actions one is local deployment for this video i'm gonna start with github deployment then go through the local deployment. So now let's uh, fork the repository. So gave a name, create a fork. Very simple, easy to do. For the whole process, probably only taking two, three minutes and you will get it done. Go to settings, pages. So build and deployment, we are using GitHub Actions. So that's only changes you need to make once you fork the project. Then go back Actions. Then you will understand my workflows, go ahead and enable them. Because the workflow was created by the author, original author, so they want you to understand what you're gonna run here. Of course, we trust this project, so we're gonna run this deploy workflow, run workflow, run workflow. And that's how simple it is. It will take probably less than two minutes to finish everything. So we're gonna wait here. It will automatically to show this deploy number one manually run by me. And you can click on it to see the process. The first process done, then they are doing the build. After that, they're gonna deploy to GitHub pages. Once you have this deployed, then you can launch the GitHub pages. Also, you can use your own domain to use this page as well. Now it's deploying to the GitHub pages.
You can click in to see more information there. It's completed. And you can click on this link to access your this new VM. The interesting thing is you can go to super user root mode. The password for the root is password. So now you can get around. You can do apt update if you have network connection. Right now we don't have that. Uh, in the next step, we can uh, demonstrate how to get your internet connection. Let's finish all deployment for now. Uh, this is GitHub deployment, but we will do the local deployment. If you have your own VPS, you can do local deployment. There's something we have to change here. There's a release ext2 image release. It's a bit too old. It's a 2023 May 19th release. Not big issue. Only thing I found is about the doc files. If you look at the doc files, you will see. If you look at the original doc files. You will find out there's something missing here. They didn't change the root password. And they didn't change the user password. Other than that, it's almost same. So what we can do is we do need to generate our own release files. So what we can do is we go back to our GitHub, we go back to our actions. When we do deploy, you want to make sure you upload GitHub release. So once you did that, you will get a release from your deployment. And our deployment, which you can see the code, We are using Debian mini this doc file. If you know how to make your own deployment file, then you can make a change on this one. And then you can add more things, add more packages into it or customize for your own usage. Then that will be great. And else, don't touch it. Then we just need to upload the deployment into your release. So let's take a look. Our new deployment. It's in the build right now. Okay, this job has been done. So let's go back to actions deployment. Right now it's deploying to the GitHub pages. All completed. Go back to the project page and then you see there's a release one. So now we have our own release and then we can take a look at our source code, which will give you that doc file has root password changed to the password. Since we have this, now we can officially go back to the deployment process. And starting to deploy it. I'm using Google Cloud Free Compute Engine to do this, and I have a SSH session already opened. So we're gonna follow the steps here one by one to get it done. First, let me do Git Chrome. This should be done in a couple of seconds. Let me cd into the folder. Now we should be able to download this Debian underscore mini ext2 image. Which we just released it. So go back here, get the link address, paste. So we're gonna let it downloading. The next step after the downloading, we're gonna edit this configuration JS file. 
we need to put the image URL here, paste. We need to on comment some environment here. Now control X, yes, and save to it. We're gonna do npm install. If it, you don't have npm installed before, then you may need to apt install npm. But if you have that, then just run npm install. Perfect. Then next npm run build. Perfect. It's done. Basically, all setup has been completed. Now we need to launch it using engine X. Here, let's the command. Before we do that, we want to create a new screen session. Okay, new and because we want to put this command into the back end. Once we we don't want to close the window, then close the engine X session here. Run this command. Now then we can use Control A D to go back to the original session. Now let's give it a try using the HTTP with this external IP address. HTTP. Well, it works. The web page shows, but we will get some error message here. Uh, I look at it. Basically, it's just saying you. You have to have a domain associated with it. So our next step is to configure domain for this website. To make this part short and simple, I just demonstrate uh, how I configured it with this domain using web vm this name and uh, it mapping to my npm the engine x proxy manager so IP address. So in uh, npm, I create a new host, which is using wvm.51sec.u.org from here, which I configured. Then it's forwarding the IP address to this VM's instance and the port 881. And make sure you have SSL certificate issued for this domain. So then you save it. Once you've done that, we can go back here try web vm 51sec.eu.org as you can see now it's fully function now you can get into root using password if you're using this release uh, no matter how you try you won't be able to get into that root mode because the password wasn't changed the last piece in this video is gonna be for the networking, how you can connect to tail scale and then connect to internet with your VM. Because for now, there's no internet connection. Our last section for this video is connecting to the tail scale internet to make sure your VM can go to internet. So what we can do here is connect to tail scale. Uh, if you watched my previous video, easy to quick set up your own VPN network using Tailscale, then you will understand it much better now. If you haven't, please go through this video to get more idea how to create your own Tailscale account, create your own Tailscale VPN network, and then set up one node as exit node first. So once you have that, you can directly come here then log into Tailscale. So once you try to log in Tailscale, they will ask you to sign in. Uh, I'm gonna sign in to my own account here. Connect. So login successfully. And then we can visit the console. So you will see there are two devices in my network. One is my Ubuntu Tailscale exit node, which I created before. This is exit node already. And this is the one we just connected. 
this is the one. So if you look at here, you can see the IP 107.487.78. So one thing you need to note is some network command it doesn't work here. WebSocket still not fully supported those networking command. Hopefully next release they will fix this that. But at the, it's still we can go to apt update. We can go to internet. There's some use cases for this web VM project right now. I'm thinking about this. One thing is definitely you can use it to learn Linux command. You can start into be familiar with all Linux command and then you can launch it in a web browser anytime as long as you have internet connection. You can also use it to SSH to your remote server or FTP to your remote server. So we can demonstrate that so once we once you have Tailscale connected, once you finish the APT update and we can SSH to some remote site. Perfect, the APT update running very well. So there's one thing you can run is this command. It's a pilot.live. Paste in. You can also try to see your public IP address. That's uh, 3455.121.25. That's my exit node IP address. Public IP address, basically. If you want to get into remote server, there's a public remote server. You can try this one. Say yes. You will now be connecting to this one. But its connection is closed. I have another server. We can give it try. The password. We just hop into another server through this VM running in the browser. If you want, you also can install certain applications. This is a screen, a small application. As you can see, the screen, this program has been installed into this VM, which is running in a browser. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Hope you like it. As usual, please give me a thumb up and subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, see you in my next video.